Hello everyone, this is HG Shaves here. I'm back with another video. Uh, this is now the end of week two of Austria August, where just as a reminder, every day for the rest of the month, I'll be using the Wolfman WR2 uh, razor. And I'm also using a Decoration Grooming B4 brush. And I'm using Oleo and Company Canaan and the Chateau Looks Unscented Toner. So I'm using this setup every week this month. And I thought this week I would focus on the brush and the soap. Um, talk to you about their characteristics on their own and then sort of uh, uh, give you some tips on how to uh, lather using these two general types of products um, together, which I'll get into more in a second. So first let's talk about the brush. Uh, this is, again, Decoration Grooming B4, a Jefferson shape. This is what Scott calls his cane pour, uh, 28 millimeter B4 knot. Uh, it hasn't changed too much uh, over the past couple weeks. I didn't, I, I'd only used it a couple times before uh, August. And the, the B4 knot is characterized by Scott as being um, a knot that is very well balanced, but not necessarily uh, spectacular in any category. So it's got decent backbone, it's got decent splay, good softness, but it's not like a ton of backbone, it's not a ton of softness, you know, things like that. And so far it's lived up to that, uh, ex you know, e expectation, I'd say, just a very kind of well-rounded knot that doesn't wow me in any particular category, but it's certainly a very, very good brush. And um, if you had this brush for your whole life, it would be great. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just drop this in some warm water to soak for a couple of minutes while we're talking. Um, you don't have to soak your Badger Knots, but a lot of these um, manufacturers will recommend that you do soak it for uh, just a little bit of time, just to give the tips a chance to really get wet through and warm through so that they're not gonna, they're gonna be less likely to break during your shave. All right, and now onto the soap. This is Oleo & Company, formerly known as Oleo Soap Works, uh, Canaan Soap. So this is their unscented duck fat base, otherwise known as the canard duck fat base, but with the addition of clover honey and goat milk. Did I say that right? Yep, clover honey and goat milk. Uh, I'm very familiar with goat milk being put into uh, soaps, you know, certainly adds a creamier uh, texture to the soap and some people really enjoy the way those milk products uh, work on the face when you're lathering and things like that. I can't really tell you what the clover honey does um, for your lather, but um, other ingredients in this, which again, this, so, so minus those two items, this is the canard base, which includes things like cocum butter, uh, duck fat, of course, castor oil, castor oil, jojoba oil, glycerin, and then some other chemicals. Um, so to show you the soap, it is quite firm. Um, I push down with great strength and no indent. So this is certainly on the firmer side of uh, modern artisan soaps. Uh, typically when I use artisan soaps, they're not this firm. And as you can see, it's kind of an off-white color. Um, and in this white tub, I've noticed that it's been particularly difficult to sometimes see kind of what you're working with um, because the lavery blend up is white and it's white in this. Maybe it's just me, but um, I don't know, if I were like a very particular person, I might scoop some of this out and put it into like my blue Captain's Choice bowl so that I'd have a little bit of um, contrast on the color. So, I think I'm just going to go ahead and get right into the lather building process with this brush and soap. Uh, keeping in mind that even if you don't have exactly this before knot or this uh, Canaan soap, if you have any of those uh, Oleo duck fat soaps, which I think are all of her current offerings, they're all in the canard base, or and if you have any kind of you know dense animal hair knot, badger boar, whatever, I think the tips are going to um, the tips I'm going to offer you are going to kind of, uh, they should blend uh, with your particular setup, if that makes sense. Uh, they should work with your setup too, even if it's not exactly the same. That's what I meant to say. So 
I've had this brush soaking for just a couple minutes here and um, I'm going to take it out of the water now. You'll hear some of the water drop into the sink just kind of when you hold it over like this. And then what I'd like to do is give it two big shakes. So listen to this. So that's quite a bit of water that got soaked up in this thing in just a couple minutes. You can see how this knot looks wet now. Um, and so one of the big things with lathering this soap that I have tried to consider, because it is kind of difficult to see, um, I have sort of thought back to the uh, Michael Friedberg lathering technique, which he very much goes on the sound of the lather to help uh, let him know when to add more water and things like that. So let's just get into it. So um, I'll start loading here for a few seconds and I see a little bit of you know moisture go onto the puck there from the brush. So basically what I do is I keep loading until I start to hear it get a little bit kind of pasty sounding like that. Um, so it is starting to get a little bit pasty here on the brush and in, on the puck, but I can still see a little bit of moisture. So I'm just gonna load for a little bit longer. And then now what I'll do is I'll add just a drop or two of water from um, my little mug here. So now there's a little bit more water in there and then I'll go back to loading. Um, I like to see a lot of proto lather when I'm initially loading off of a tub, especially with, you know, artisan soaps. I like to see the proto lather to, to, to let me know that I'm doing something right. And fortunately or unfortunately with the soap, it's very difficult to get it to that point unless you're actively trying to get it to kind of, um, you know, build up a little bit for you. So, so far it's still, there's just like a little bit of suds kind of on the side, but still really nothing built up. So, I, I mean, and when I say built up, I mean, again, that proto lather. So there is some soap getting into the brush, but to me, this is not um, enough to start. Um, if I'm gonna be face lathering and I'm not going to have a bowl on the side to go back to, I really wanna make sure that I have plenty of soap so that it could last me you know, three passes built up into the brush without having to go back to the tub to load more. And especially when you're using a high-end badger like this, I feel like you want to face lather and you wanna use the brush on your face as much as possible, as opposed to working it in a bowl, right? Because that's why you pay for this brush, uh, in my opinion. There's an in my opinion for you. So it's starting to get a little bit creamier here now. Uh, again, to me, it's really hard to see. But I can tell now, standing over here, that it's getting a little bit creamier. But still, I'm just going to keep adding a touch of water to the puck here. And when I mean a touch, I mean just like a flick, you know, um, out of the mug. And again, because it's firm, because this knot is so dense and does kind of hog the lather, uh, relatively compared to something like a synthetic brush. Because of those reasons, I have to really load for a long time to get the kind of load that I want um, onto the face of the brush. Um, also, my water here, I think, is very hard. And so because of that, I'll, I have to add a lot of um, soap to my lathers anyway, because the water just kind of kills it. So, this is looking much better. I think I'm just gonna do a little bit more because I can see there's plenty of moisture here already on the puck. And again, it does sort of build up just a touch in the tub here, but again, not nearly as much as um, other softer artisan soaps. Um, if you all have experience with this base and you've had a different experience, um, feel free to let me know. I love to hear about it. I'm just pulling out um, badger hairs. <laughs> okay, so this is what the brush looks like. Um, you wanna see that the bristles are really saturated and um, could you go with a very light load and then really work it up? Yes, but that's not my preference. My, pre my preference is to have plenty of soap uh, lather built up. So I'm gonna wet my face real quick and then uh, bring you back in for the lather building process. Just a sec. Okay, so I've put some water on my face and then also as Michael would do, um, add just a touch of water to the base of the brush, and then let's get into it.
All right, so I've just kind of added this initial layer of uh, soap here. And the soap definitely does remain sort of low structure, um, low volume, but very dense, certainly. And so um, you might think that this looks creamy, this looks good, but when you do the slap test here, and also if you hear it, you can tell that it's not actually uh, slick enough. There's actually not enough water built in. And that's one of the things with the soap too, is that I think it's a little bit deceiving in telling you when it's ready uh, to be shaped with. So I just put some water on the brush, I'm gonna keep adding, and I'll bring you back in. We're gonna add more water still, it's getting better. Uh, you'll notice it thinned out a bit um, from the last time since I added water, but it still needs a little bit more because again, it's just not feeling uh, it's optimal uh, on the slickness. All right, and that's, think about where I'd like to run it um, this week, for example. Uh, the thing with face lathering is that it's not gonna necessarily be even across your face. So what I was doing there at the end is just making sure that this, my right side um, is getting as good as my left side. My left side actually looks a bit better, but we're gonna shape with this. So um, I'm gonna warm the razor through. I'll bring you back in for pass number one. All right, pass one with the grain, with the WR2 1.25 solid bar with a pulse over in there. All right, pass one complete. Um, that was a good pass, but again, the thing I was talking to you about, about the lather being even, it wasn't quite even. So on my cheeks here, it was wet enough, but here in the center, not really. Um, I could tell because when I was kind of cleaning out the razor here on the side, I could shake the lather off and it would fly right off. And that's a good sign that your um, lather has enough water in it. But here in the middle, um, not as easy. So when I load up here for pass number two, I'm gonna see what I can do about that. So I'm gonna rinse and I'll be right back. All right, let's load up for pass number two. So this lather right here kind of is gonna automatically feel a bit thinner and a bit um, 
wetter because uh, it's your second pass and when you face leather like this there's so much soap that you start off with in that pass number one that just the second pass is going to naturally kind of be like that but this is honestly probably going to serve me better than that first pass did so this is just my reminder that uh, the volume of your lather is not as important as the slickness so i'm going to do my second pass here kind of across and against the grain Beautiful shave there. Um, there when I was kind of buffing here, <clears throat> excuse me, um, on my neck, was really uh, pleased with how the soap performed there. Um, the soap just allowed the razor to glide very easily. And I think with a soap that was not as good and as not, not as well uh, worked up, I think that would have caused me a lot of trouble. And actually that spot has caused me trouble in the past, but, um, uh, that was fantastic. So I'm going to do my final rinse and come back and talk to you over post shave. For post shave today, as mentioned, the Chation Lux unscented toner, toner meaning there's no alcohol. And because there's no water in this formula, you really just need like three douses. That's what I do. So one, two, three, and maybe three and a half. Um, because it doesn't absorb as quickly into the skin as alcohol splash would you really don't need that that much um, and that makes this toner very economical um, you know the the bottle here is only two ounces to begin with but I've been using this for like I don't know I have to have used this probably 30 times in its life, and that's how much damage we put into it. And this is, again, a two ounce bottle. So um, that's a nice thing about the toner. Yeah, uh, really impressed with uh, the shave today. This was definitely one of the better ones. Um, I, again, I was kind of struggling to lather the soap with this brush, uh, maybe last week, but it's, it's definitely gotten better. So final thoughts for the uh, Canaan soap base. I think it performs very well. And um, if you're looking for a non-beef tallow, but still animal uh, soap formula, this is a good option. Um, it definitely, again, provides a different feeling. If you're, if you're looking for something that's a bit more low structure, a bit more dense, not as kind of um, voluminous, I think this is a good option. Um, and yeah, it's firm. And so if you're using a soft brush, especially a dense big brush like this, it's gonna take a little bit of extra work, but once you kind of have a game plan and you're used to it, like I've been, I mean, I've been doing this for 15 days straight now, <laughs> um, it gets a bit easier. So I just wanted to uh, make this video for you all to uh, let you know about the good news of uh, Oleo and Company. It's not Oleo Soapworks anymore, people. It's Oleo and Company. This is like when your friend um, Nick 
says that he doesn't want to go by Nick anymore. He wants to go by Nicholas. And you're like, well, man, I've called you Nick my whole life. I don't want to call you Nicholas. It's the same thing with Olio. I've called him Olio Soapworks for like the past year. And now I've got to thank Olio and company. Anyway, um, thank you all for watching. Next week, same gear. I'll try to think of something uh, maybe more general to talk about. So if you made it this far, as always, thank you so much. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave them down below or shoot me an email, message me on Instagram, whatever uh, suits you. So this has been HD Shaves. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.